In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the formal definition of a limit, or sometimes this is referred to them as the mathematical definition. So given that the limit of our function f of x as x approaches c is equal to l. Okay, so given this, the formal definition says that for every epsilon, or for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, okay? So again, so epsilon is just a uh, Greek letter, and delta is also a Greek letter. So I'll be explaining those uh, more uh, later on. Um, so let's try to understand this definition from an algebraic point of view, okay? And then we'll tie that information into the, in, into the limit, okay? So let's take a closer look at what this part means here. What does this mean, x minus c less than delta? Okay, so algebraically, this is the same thing as saying minus delta less than x minus c less than delta. Okay, so that's, an, that's algebraically, algebraically equivalent to that. So from here, what we can do is we can go ahead and isolate the x by adding c on both sides. Okay, so we're going to get c minus delta less than x, and then x will be less than c plus delta. Okay, so we have that x is bounded by c minus delta and c plus delta. Okay, so another way to write this Okay, this is the same thing, okay, this is the same thing as writing, okay, x belongs to c minus delta and c plus delta, okay, that's all that means, okay, so, so we, so typically in math we call this, a, this is sometimes referred to as a neighborhood, okay, so we have that x belongs to this neighborhood, well, this, where, where this neighborhood has a lower bound of C minus delta and an upper bound of C plus delta, okay? So we can approach uh, this, right? we can approach this in the same way, okay? So this is equivalent to minus epsilon less than F of X minus L less than epsilon. And then from here, we can go ahead and isolate, uh, we can go ahead and isolate F of X by adding L to both sides so we're going to get L minus epsilon less than F of X, and this is going to be less than L plus epsilon. Okay, so again, this, is, this means that F of X belongs to a neighborhood where the, the neighborhood has a lower bound of L minus epsilon and an upper bound of L plus epsilon. Okay. So this gives us an, uh, a kind of an idea, a relationship between what's happening with x and the uh, function value, f of x, okay? All right, so let's, I'm gonna go ahead and draw, I'm gonna go ahead and draw these out on the graph, okay? Okay. Okay, let's make this more vertical. Okay, that should suffice. All right, let's draw on a, let me draw on a function that we can work with. Let's see. And let's say our function has a hole in it. Okay. All right, so let's say that's our function. So that's my y-axis, is the x-axis, okay? All right, so let's look at this first part here where x belongs to c minus delta, c plus delta, okay? Um, but before they do that, let's label the, let's, uh, let me identify what c is. So in our diagram, okay, c is, 
C. C will be here, okay. Okay, so this is C, okay, and this is our, this is, this is going to be L, okay. So the limit of f of x as x approaches c is going to be equal to l, okay? So remember, the function doesn't need to be defined at that point for the limit to exist, okay? All right, so looking at the, at the first uh, neighborhood where x belongs to c minus delta, c plus delta, okay, we can draw that along here, okay? So we can go ahead and label this down here so we have a neighborhood surrounding c, Okay, so let me I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, all right. So the upper bound, okay, let's see. So the upper bound of this neighborhood uh, is, is C plus delta. Okay, and the lower bound is C minus delta. Okay, so remember C, so C lies in that neighborhood. Okay, and it's equal distance. Okay, so the distance is the same. So the distance between C and C plus delta is the same as the distance between C and C minus delta. So in other words, this delta is acting as the radius of this neighborhood. Okay, and if we do look at this, the one for f of x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a neighborhood around L. All right, so let me make this a little bit closer in. Oops. Okay. Okay, so now we have L minus, so down here we have L minus epsilon, okay, and we have L plus epsilon. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, see where these lie. Okay, so I'm going to trace this back to our function. This is going to come down here, and this one's going to trace back and then come down here. Okay, all right. So that's what these two neighbors look like um, geometrically. All right, so what this is saying, okay, is that for every epsilon, no matter how small epsilon is, okay, we can always find a delta that surrounds, uh, we can always find a delta that surrounds our C value, okay? All right, so no matter how small epsilon is, epsilon, remember epsilon could be, for example, it could be 0.00001, okay? And we can always find a delta, okay? For that and corresponding to that neighborhood of epsilon okay so if we look at if we look at a let's say we have an x value okay let's say x is here okay okay so if we go back if we evaluate this function at x okay then we can see that's going to lie inside our neighborhood Right inside the uh, neighborhood of of our uh, corresponding to epsilon. Okay, so again, you can see no matter how small epsilon gets, we can always find a uh, we can always find a delta neighborhood. Okay, so no matter how small this neighborhood is, there will always be an x inside there. Okay, that will go back, and then you can evaluate that f of, at f, f of x, and that f of x will be in the neighborhood of epsilon. Okay, so what this is saying is that, okay, so if you think about this in terms of the left and right hand limit, okay, so if x, so as epsilon gets smaller and smaller, okay, the x values are getting closer and closer to c from whichever side it's on, either from the left side or from the right side, okay. So as, as x gets closer and closer to c, the x values, the corresponding function values are getting closer and closer to l. Okay, so in fact, this is what we mean, okay, when, 
the absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon means that f of x is becoming arbitrary close to l. Okay, it's becoming arbitrarily close to l. Okay, All right, so if epsilon is really small, okay, like 0 0.0001, that means the distance between f of x and l is also going to be very small. In fact, smaller than epsilon. Okay, because it's strictly less than epsilon. So you can see that from this diagram down here. All right, again, as epsilon, as epsilon gets smaller and smaller, the x values, right, the surrounding values, the x values that are surrounding C are getting closer and closer to C. Okay, and as they get closer and closer to C, the corresponding function values are getting closer and closer to L. Therefore, you can see that the left and right hand limits are approaching the same value of L. Okay, all right, so that's how this definition is, is being used here, okay? And there's other definitions like this um, in math, um, particularly um, relating to the continuity, okay? Um, so it's a similar idea there as well, okay? So let me, what I wanna do, okay, is I'm in the next video, okay, the next video I'm gonna, Get, provide an example, okay, where you're given you're given a specific epsilon and you want to find the corresponding uh, delta value for that, okay, and all that is is basically applying the definition. It's really straightforward. And it's just knowing how to use the definition, and then the next video after that, I want to show you how to we can use this idea to prove a limit, okay, all right. And so in that case, we need to show for every epsilon. We need to show that there's a, a delta neighborhood that depends on that epsilon. Okay, so that's uh, what I'm going to work on. Okay.